So you moved to the Bay, now what? In this video, we're gonna talk about things that you could possibly focus on after you made the big move to the big city of San Francisco. And whether you're here for tech or for any other reasons, there's definitely some goals and priorities you need to set in order to get to the next level that you're trying to get to. And this all can of course be applied to any other major city out there or any other city for that matter. You should always have your goals and you should always focus on why you're pursuing those goals. They should always be for good reasons. So without further ado, let's get started and talk about some questions. What I wanna do in this video is lay some of the things out, some of the foundation for future videos and get your guys' feedback. I'd love for you guys to leave a comment down below on the things that you wanna hear about. So I'll definitely talk about them. If this is the first video of mine that you're watching, my name is Max. I do investing in rent videos, typically local videos here in San Francisco. So definitely check those out if you have some free time. But without further ado, let's get started. So in my opinion, the very first and very important thing that you should do when focusing on your future is figuring out why you're doing the things that you're doing. If you wanna grow wealth or save a lot of money, what's the reason for that? Is it for a better lifestyle? Is it to support your family members? And so on and so on. Figure out the reason behind the things that you wanna do and doing those things is gonna become a lot easier with a clear vision in mind. Whether it's just making a lot of money and um, pursuing the things that you love, that's definitely also another reason. But the more impactful, the more meaningful reasons such as family can definitely drive you to do much greater things. So definitely always keep that in mind and make sure you set your priorities and goals before you dive into anything. So when you get to a city like San Francisco, you'll notice there's some major differences between San Francisco and some of the other cities out there. Things tend to be generally a little more expensive. So you definitely gotta take that into account where thinking about your salary and how much you'll be making here. $80,000 in San Francisco doesn't translate to $80,000 somewhere else in America. So definitely take that into account and take that into account when you're doing your job negotiations and so on and so on. You can always check out Glassdoor and look at Know Your Worth and they'll tell you what you should be paying for the type of job that you're working for the region that you're working at. And I think that's super valuable information to know your fair market value and to take it from there. Now, let's say you got a great job, great salary, and you just moved to San Francisco and you're just trying to maximize the amount of money you can invest and put into investments and just grow your wealth in general. So for that, you're gonna need to save money. And in order to save money, you're gonna need to look for ways to cut down your rent your takeout expenses, whatever that may be, your travel expenses, leisure, and so on and so on. So for that, I would say when you're focusing on rent, definitely check out some of my other videos out there, which have focused on rent very heavily. And what I would say there is to get the best rent, just to sum it up very quickly, definitely check out apartment list and look at some of the cheapest options out there. They actually tell you what the discounts are and everything like that. And then go ahead and negotiate your rent below what they're actually asking. This works almost every single time. So definitely, definitely is worth doing something like that. Now, when it comes to takeout or other leisure for takeout, I would definitely recommend make sure you get a place that you can actually cook at so you don't have to do takeout. Takeout can be really expensive anywhere from $15 if you get like a meal plan to anywhere as high as $30 if you're getting delivery every single day and you don't have a meal plan. And obviously you can go up from there if you're ordering a lot of food. So that's definitely something to keep in mind as you live here <laughs> and live anywhere for that matter. When you're looking at a place to rent or a place to buy here in San Francisco or the Bay Area, it's very important that you consider the travel it takes to get to work or the travel it takes to get to a grocery store and so on and so on and some of your favorite spots out there as well. So it's very important to take that into account because if you're getting around the city on Ubers or Lyft, that can definitely be a lot of expenses for you. I would also highly recommend if you're in your 20s, definitely pick up a longboard, some rollerblades, something like a bike, whatever you feel comfortable on, a pair of wheels to get around the city much faster. It could also be a scooter, whatever it could be. 
definitely check that out as an option but i would say be careful leaving your stuff outside in the city always make sure it's with you if it's a bike a scooter you gotta make sure it's well locked up otherwise it will get stolen or parts of it would get stolen so definitely keep that in mind but what i want you to take away from this is that it's extremely important to have a plan for travel around the city because Lyft and Uber is expensive. So if you want to minimize the amount of expenses that you're doing with that, definitely pick up something like longboarding, rollerblading, or even biking, whatever is more convenient for you. And that way you can save a lot of money on Uber and Lyft because it's always minimum like $10 per ride. Usually it could be as high as $20 per ride to get to some of the other part of the city. So definitely take that into account of your expenses. And this brings us closer to budgeting. When you arrive and you're trying to make the most out of the amount of money that you're making, it's important to have a budget so you can make a budget for your leisure, for your travel, for your logistics, and for your rent, and so on and so on. And with that, you can then understand how much money you will be able to invest. And if you apply a growth rate of 7% to that or something like that, you'll be able to understand what it would take to get to the next level that you're trying to get to and to get to the goals that you're trying to get to much quicker. One other thing that you may consider when thinking about how to raise more money and how to save more money is finding alternative income. So there's good reasons to do this and also bad reasons to do this. Typically, any other income, additional income that you get will be taxable. So if you're growing your income, make sure that you realize that you're definitely going to be taxed by California and by federal government as well. And that could be as high as 30 and beyond. So definitely keep that in mind. And the reason why I say be careful with this is when you're young and in your 20s, you should definitely be focusing on growing your wealth and less so your income. And what's the difference between the two of those? Your wealth is something that can grow in the stocks. So basically you put the money in until you take it out, you don't have to pay taxes. And if you take it out after a year, it's gonna be considered as long-term investment and be taxed a little bit differently. It will be taxed 20%, I believe, here in California. Now that can make a huge difference when it being compared to your short-term gains and getting taxed as your regular income. Additionally, focusing on dividends, the exact same thing. You have income coming in, you're going to get taxed on it as your regular income. So that's definitely something to also keep in mind when you're young, you're in your 20s, your 30s, 40s, so on. Definitely keep in mind that you want to be focusing on growing your wealth. So get into stocks that are growing very rapidly, get into crypto and so on. And that is extremely important for you at this stage of life because you're, you're able to handle a lot more risk and you don't need extra income if that's not what your focus is. Your focus right now should be growing your wealth so that when you retire at 65, 75, or even earlier than that, let's say you wanna retire at 50, doesn't matter what the case may be, you can actually move to a different state and start selling your stocks when you get to that state. And I think that is super cool and super valuable to know. So there you have it. Smash the like button if that's something that you didn't know and you found super helpful. That would definitely help me out as a creator as well. So what kind of additional income should you focus on? My best recommendation would be to you to look at personal projects, things that are maybe to do with your hobbies or your jobs that can generate you extra income. So the things that you definitely love doing and love doing on the side, that can also generate some income for you. For me, that's YouTube. Even though I don't generate any income from YouTube, I love doing it because I love video editing, I love talking to you guys, and I love making these videos. So for me, that's definitely a huge thing that I can go ahead and do. And even though I'm not getting paid now, I know that I'm investing my time right now. So in the year that I do get monetized, I will start making money. And that will add to my general income, which then you can form under an LLC or something like that to actually set it up as a business and pay taxes on it very differently. So there's lots of things that you can do 
to increase your income or generate new revenue streams. But keep in mind that building all of these revenue streams is going to be quite difficult. Everyone talks about here are the five best passive income that you can do out there. And they're right, selling products on Amazon or doing YouTube or investing, whatever the case may be, are very good passive income options. However, they all take a lot of time to grow. And if you're looking for the easiest path to passive income, that's of course dividends. But then why are you growing your income when you should be growing your wealth? Right? I think that's a very good question. So things such as YouTube or selling products on Amazon or making products are a much better option because you're investing your time and you're growing the business side of it, the social side of it. For those cases, you can actually set up a business and get them taxed differently than dividends. And I think that could be very useful and you can save a lot of money. Plus you're investing into uh, something that's completely new, completely different from what you're currently doing. Whereas dividends, you always have the option to invest into dividend stocks and collect dividends. There's nothing too crazy about that, but that is typically for when you're a little bit older and you're either retired or close to retirement and you basically want to generate some continuous income and that's definitely a great place for dividends that's what i truly believe they're meant for where you just keep generating income and those stocks typically stay flat for the most part some of them actually end up growing which is excellent because then your wealth also grows and you're getting a dividend i think that's definitely a great great plus so keep that in mind and lastly i want to finish off by quickly telling you what are your options for growing wealth some of the common options that i'm aware of and i hope you guys can get into learn to understand and explore further so that you can grow your wealth with what's happening out there so the most common ways of growing your wealth is through investments and there's different kinds that you could do you can do index funds etfs or individual stocks, whatever it may be, keep in mind that you should always do your own research and definitely figure out what is right for you. Index investing is for somebody that prefers more of automatic investing and somebody that maybe wants to focus less on individual company research and just wants to get a bigger basket of everything. Whereas individual stocks is for people that are more meticulous and they want to do the research and they want to understand the company or they just blindly invest by listening to somebody on YouTube or Reddit, whatever the case may be. And then ETFs is basically like index funds that are traded like stock. Also a great option. So definitely learn about all of those and figure out what's best for you. But as of recently, uh, it started actually a really long time ago, but recently caught a lot of hype, is cryptocurrency. This is definitely something that you can invest in and always invest something that you can afford to lose, but you can definitely get into Bitcoin, Ethereum, maybe even Dogecoin, whatever it is, you can definitely get into it and very quickly grow your wealth. Ever since I started investing just a few months ago, Ethereum basically doubled. So you can understand that you can grow your money very quickly with some of these cryptocurrency. Dogecoin did a, four, a 14X in that time period. And I think it's absolutely insane with where the things are going. And could it all fall apart? Yes, it could. But how likely is that to happen? We don't know. And that's gonna differ from coin to coin. So my best advice to you is the coin that you trust the most allocate the most amount of percentage to and then as the trust goes down you allocate less and less so you have this back basket of cryptocurrency and that shouldn't be a giant percent of your portfolio i think it's generally unhealthy to have that as 50 percent of your investing portfolio but if you keep it to 20 25 percent maybe 30 if you're like really risky I think that could be very healthy and very profitable. Keep in mind, nothing lasts forever and everything's going crazy right now. All the real estate prices are going insane. Cryptocurrency is going insane. Investments are getting higher. Real estate's growing higher. So there's a huge expansion right now of wealth and this is all due to the interest rates. 
keep in mind when the interest rates actually start to go back up and things to start to level out things will plateau and kind of level out and maybe even crash a little bit when the news first comes out so always invest the money that you can afford to lose and that you can afford to risk never take on debt to do any of this investing just to get to the next level that you're trying to get to and always understand why you're doing the things you're doing so i hope some of this helped you guys a lot and once you move to san francisco or whatever the case may be maybe new york the bay area anything like that once you make the move you'll be more prepared to what you want to do next and what you want to achieve while you spend time down here and definitely if you're working in tech one of the most prioritized things should be growing at your workplace and working on side projects that can get you that billion dollar net worth that is all for today guys thank you so much for watching i'll see you next time